thank you for your time, everyone. Uh, I do realize that I'm not whoever was supposed to be here originally, but as I understand it, there was, but that's just for me, so don't even sweat it. Is it is it being picked up? Uh, I think it's being in the okay. I'll take I'll totally take it off. Don't sweat it. Okay, sorry about that. No, that's no problem. Introduction, take two. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for your time. I realize that uh, this is not the original speaker in the slot. I'm not sure who it was, but um, as I uh, mentioned uh, earlier, uh, last night, just in complete. You know, we're also having fun, and uh, I approached one of the organizers. I'm like, hey, you know, if you have a slot for lightning talk, I'd love to take it. And they told me they actually had some full slots open. And, uh, you know, they asked me if I had, like, something a little longer. And I'm like, say no more, uh, because uh, I've done a longer version of this talk. I've done this talk in, like, six minutes, so I'm, I'm well uh, versed. That being said, Welcome. Uh, my name is Henri, uh, spelt with an I because I am uh, French-speaking, mother tongue. So um, I, I will say Henry simply because sometimes people have the problem with the Henri, -ri, you know, that part. Riri, they'll say, but they can't say Henri. Um, but I do answer to both. And you can find me on Twitter at Henri Helvetica. Um, that is a known plume. I've been often asked whether it was my real name or not. I say no, and I usually wait to see if people get up and leave. I'm happy you're still here. Um, you can find me on Twitter there. I'm pretty active there. Um, my favorite place to sort of interact with folks. So uh, by all means, if you have any uh, comments or anything you'd like to um, tell me, uh, find me there. And I work for the Venerable Web Page Test. It is a web performance testing tool uh, that's been around for quite a while actually, not super, super well known, um, sort of like this top layer of web intelligentsia uh, have known about it uh, because Pat Meenan, the author, was um, uh, had it back then. Um, so long story short, um, we're a small team, uh, but we're, bi we're part of the bigger org at Catchpoint. And uh, where we, again, it's all about like monitoring, it's all about web performance, and uh, yeah, I love it there. We actually celebrated 14 years today. Um, so I had a, um, an all hands up in the little corner of the room, you know. That being said, um, man, I'm just I'm glad to be here in Atlanta, you know. So uh, I'm a big sort of like uh, transit subway person, so I had to use the little colors because I thought that was cool. Um, yeah, every th first time I came, I'm like, yo, those colors are pretty cool, man. I'm going to use them in my deck. Okay, so what do we hear about? Well, um, my talk right now is L for Literacy. That's the title of the talk. So why is it titled L for Literacy? Well, um, my role at Webpage Test, uh, officially it's lead developer community. Uh, I love working with developers. I love helping them level up. Uh, I love showing them uh, what is possible with either APIs and or what's going on in the web or what we're doing on our side to help people have more performant websites. Um, so it is a bit of sort of like an education play. Um, my parents are retired teachers, you know, and they would be freaking out right now, you know. Uh, but that being said, uh, I love that element of, of sort of like education and academia when it comes to uh, developer content. So what this is going to be essentially, uh, I'm going to cycle through the alphabet, A to Z, and for every letter, I'm going to talk about a web performance term or something that has to do with web performance, whether it be like a core concept or if it lives on the sort of a periphery of performance, but uh, A definitely will have some kind of involvement when it comes to uh, performance sites. So. Uh, sit back, relax, and uh, let's go. So, obviously, I mean, you halfway know what's going to happen, but the first letter is A. What does A stand for? Well, in this case, A is going to stand for, what did I say? AVIF. So, AVIF is a brand new image format. It's about two or three years old. And what's happening right now, images on the web, uh, the majority of images that we know well, they've been around for a very long time, anywhere from... 20-some years to 35 even. I'll get into that in a second. 
The web needs smaller images. Why? Well, images take up the majority of your website content, anywhere from 43 to sometimes 60% on average, depending on the, um, uh, the median. But um, we have needed smaller images to go down the pipe. You know, and this is one of the uh, formats uh, that are fairly new uh, that are coming around the way. If you use CDNs, you might start to see them uh, popping out in the wild. Safari, aka Apple's browser, just added support for AVIF this week when they release iOS 16. So this is something that you want to keep in mind. Um, the next is B. B is going to stand for broadly. Now, another thing that I like to remind people about the web is nothing happens on the web without compression. And Broadly is another compression tool. Um, you may be familiar with gzipping. Gzip, Broadly is the update. So um, a lot of times if you pop in open your dev tools, you're going to see BR. That means that, uh, that file was uh, compressed by Broadly. Okay. C. C is going to stand for Core Web Vitals. Now, some of you may or may not be familiar with Core Web Vitals. Uh, there are three metrics that have been deemed the three that will sort of gauge a website's health. So they, uh, they are made up of uh, the LCP, which is the largest contentful paint, CLS, which is a cumulative layout shift, and FID, which is first input delay. And um, I'll give you some quick stats. Um, for only 40% of about 15 million sites have good LCP, good FID, and good CLS. Um, the rest, it'll vary, but this is a very important concept that performance people take, uh, take a look at, SEO people take a look at, and all things in between, some PMs even. Um, this is um, a sort of set of metrics that are fairly easy to, to understand. D. D is going to stand for defer. And what do I mean by defer? Defer is an attribute that we apply certainly to JavaScript, especially because of its execution nature. And essentially, JavaScript is going, to be ex um, is going to be loaded up in three different ways. Straight script, it, you find it, you parse it, you execute. You can async it where you find it. It won't be interrupted to parse, but then it'll execute right away. In this case, when you use defer, you're going to find it, you're going to be able to parse it in parallel with HTML, and you're going to make, the, uh, make this file execute at the end. So a lot of times, the JavaScript that you're using, unless it's absolutely crucial to have execute immediately, you can actually defer it to later and hopefully not uh, interrupt your site too, too much. Now, when we get to E, we're going to talk about emissions. This is something that actually is becoming more and more uh, important, uh, certainly, and something that is being tracked a lot more as well. Essentially, every site that you use up, that you visit, there are some emissions that are being generated from that. So a lot of times, the heavy, heavy sites that have like big images and, and a lot of content that may not be there, um, uh, that may not be parsed properly, there are image, uh, images, emissions involved, CO2 emissions specifically. And in fact, um, you know, at WebHS, we're actually starting to look at ways of integrating um, uh, some ways of sort of indicating to developers what kind of emissions are going to be involved with this site in particular. Just like when you get on a plane now, they'll let you know. It's like, hey, you're going to Amsterdam. And here's you know, roughly the kind of emissions that are going to be involved, would you like to pay an extra five bucks to counter that with, you know, however they, pro they process uh, that money. So this is something very important. You're probably going to see it a little bit more, um, especially next year, because I understand in Europe, they're actually moving forward with some, you know, web um, emissions kind of um, guidance. So um, let's move to the letter F. F is going to be for fetch priority. So something that's happening is happening right now as well online, uh, certain with particular resources. Um, you may want to prioritize the um, parsing or the uh, the download of the site up uh, site of the 
resource. So a lot of times images, it might be JavaScript, it might be CSS even, you can add a priority of high to that resource, to that file, so that it downloads very early and so that the browser paints it to the screen as soon as possible. So I'm thinking of maybe a hero image, right? You wanna make sure that if it's supposed to pop up on your screen ASAP, you wanna make sure that it's given that absolute priority so that um, the browser knows like, oh, that hero image, I gotta paint that to the screen now. Pow, and it gets that done. So that's the fetch priority. G, I know I'm gonna get booze here. G stands for GIF. <laughs> GIF, say it together now, soft G. Softer than my hands, all right? Um, when I talk about older images, I'm talking about things like the GIF. The GIF celebrated 35 years today. Think about that for a hot minute. Um, it's still being used to an extent, but a lot less these days. Um, this year was especially kind of special in the sense that uh, it was the first anniversary of the GIF without its author, uh, its uh, inventor, Steve Wilhite, passed away earlier this year. It was a, I was a little bummed. But um, I just want to remind everyone, that um, it's a soft G, all right? So don't get it twisted. Um, H, the greatest letter of the alphabet, hint, hint. But uh, H stands for HTTP, and specifically I'm gonna say HTTP3, which is the newest version of the protocol to load sites onto a page. Uh, essentially, you know, this is an improvement over H2, which you may or may not be familiar with, but you're probably familiar with H1.1, which is the one that was around for the longest. Um, H2 was a big improvement to that. It added things like multiplexing, which means you're actually sending um, more files through, the, through a single connection. Uh, with H3, things that they're pretty much trying to do and to an extent have done, um, zero RTT, which, is, which means basically a round trip time of literally no time, if you could just wrap your head around that. Uh, but essentially, uh, this is again an improvement in terms of the connection. And, you know, on paper, we're talking about three times faster than H.1.1. Uh, H1.1, which uh, had been around for a very long time. So I, I is actually going to stand for image management, images, uh, essentially. Why? is image management important? Well, believe it or not, uh, images have been around the web for about 27 years, uh, but uh, in the last few, they've been a bit of a pain to manage. Um, images are getting bigger, uh, they mean a lot to the internet, they also, uh, since we're adding more images to sites, uh, they're taking up a lot of bandwidth, which is why we need like new image formats to make it smaller, but, um, they also tend to mess up things like your core web vitals, uh, specifically the, your largest contentful paint. Uh, because 70% of the time, the largest, the LCP is made up of images and uh, they're not handled very well. So this is something that you absolutely want to keep in mind. J. Um, J is going to stand for Joint Photographic Expert Group, a.k.a. the JPEG. Uh, the JPEG believe it or not, turns 30 years old on Sunday. Uh, the JPEG also is probably, uh, out of all the images I'd say online, is the best one uh, in the sense that it's the only one that's raster and gives you lossy compression, all right? So it's, in terms of compression, it's better than the GIF and it's better than the PNG, all right? Um, which is probably why it's lasted so long and which is probably why it's going to keep lasting, even though um, all the new formats are coming in. Um, but it's been the workhorse of the internet when it comes to images. Now, K. K is going to stand for kilobytes. And uh, what I mean by that is you want to make sure you keep an eye on them. You know, you manage the kilobytes on sites because 
Again, images take up a big part of it. Also, believe it or not, um, JavaScript is actually taking up more and more room on your sites um, through libraries in all likelihood. But the problem is there's a lot of unused JavaScript remaining online. Also, um, once upon a time, uh, we used to just load all the images that are requested on a page, which is why we came around with things like lazy load, because that would also alleviate some of that pain of loading uh, assets that you were poss possibly not looking at. So um, image weight is very important, so that's why K stands for kill byte. Let's give you, I'll give you a qu couple quick stats. Um, roughly, uh, the median page is two megs, all right, at the median, which is kind of a lot considering like what you really need. Um, at the 90th percentile, and this is on mobile by the way, at the 90th percentile, it jumps to almost nine megs. Okay, that's actually kind of crazy. And that's meant to load on a mobile device, all right? So for those of you who do not have an iPhone, I'm, I feel you. So L, L is gonna stand for the largest contentful paint, which is again, LCP, which is part of the Core Web Vitals that I talked about. Now, why is the largest contentful paint in, um, important? It's actually the one metric that developers struggle with the most. And this is like all over the place. And in fact, it's been such a concern. Um, Google is spending a little bit of time sort of like, you know, refining the messaging and putting out some content reminding people about the LCP. Um, again, why? It's because this is the content that's most prominent on your, in your viewport when you load a page up. So if you mess this part up, the user experience starts to go downhill. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the LCP, 70% of the time, it's made up of images. What does that mean? If you mess up your image management, in all likelihood, you're messing up your LCP as well. So there's this big chain reaction that takes place. Um, so you want to keep an eye on this by all means. M, M, M. M stands for measure. Um, the one thing, all the people who are accustomed to testing, That's me. All right. <laughs> um, you cannot, like, you need to measure. That's the bottom line. And in fact, um, you know how it goes, measure twice, cut once, right? If you do not measure, you have no idea what's going on in your page. There might be some surprises that you didn't realize. Mistakes happen, you know? Um, so M is absolutely for measure. N, um, man, I'm kind of flying through this. All good. Um, N is for the Network Information API. This is actually one of my favorite APIs because I thought it was kind of cool. So what does it do? Well, you're able to sort of pull your user's network at the time, right? So, um, I don't know, I could be outside and I might get like a good strong 4G signal uh, and I'm going on ESPN looking at scores, but I might be a little further out maybe in the country or I might be, I don't know, in, uh, in a sort of, I don't know, the West Indies, where I may have like some super, super spotty connection, I might be on like a very weak 3G signal. I'm able to pull that with this API. Why is that important? Well, I can figure out that if I see that my user's on a good, strong 4G signal, I might send them a real sort of like kind of crispy, clean picture of, I don't know, Rihanna. But if I realize that they're not on a good connection through this API, I may be like, okay, well, their connection's kind of spotty. I might give them like this sort of real weird, sort of like lightweight, black and white, you know, something. So you could actually make asset decisions on what to send depending on the network that they're on. So that's the Network Information API. 
And then what will happen, you'll get these settings. It'll say like slow 2G, 2G, 3G, and 4G. Um, so it's kind of cool, actually. You can actually properly open your DevTools and, uh, and play around with it and see how it comes up. O. O stands for a really interesting um, sort of uh, kind of like a, a connection, um, network connection, if you want to call it that. But it's, O stands for offline. Um, there's actually a case to have an offline capable site. Certainly, depending on your, your, uh, the part of the world that you're at. But, you know, what if I'm in like New York, where uh, I take the subway all the time, right? I may want to be on a page, it gets cached. Strong caching obviously is involved here. And then I can maybe peruse like the article, like one or two, three pages, you know, front, back, whatever. Um, I remember when um, I sort of started this, uh, I wrote up this lightning talk, um, Jeep had this uh, promotion um, and a campaign where they talked about maybe some new features in a Jeep that they had, whatever. And um, their marketing site was offline capable, you know. So the goal was to let people know you can actually go in the wilderness and still access that page, no matter the, the connection. And do not forget, uh, the network is unreliable. A cell network is absolutely un unreliable, and the, you know, the cache is like 300 million times faster than reaching out to the cell network. That's what you want to keep in mind. Um, yeah, so it's actually pretty cool. So O stands for offline. P. Um, P in this case is going to stand for preload. Now, once again, in the spirit of having a good user experience, um, you want to make sure that your assets that need to show up on your viewport are downloaded as quickly as possible. Just as I mentioned with the fetch priority, P uh, standing for preload will tell the browser that this needs to be downloaded ASAP. So again, your critical assets that you feel need to be given that label are the ones that you want to preload. Now, some developers sometimes will get slick and they'll tag a bunch of their, ass, uh, a bunch of their um, requests with this preload attribute. The browser will actually tell you, hey, don't be slick because the ones that you do not use immediately, AKA aren't showing up on the viewport, you're basically wasting bandwidth. So now if you preload the assets that are, meant, that are not meant to really show up on the viewport ASAP, you're actually having some bandwidth contention and you know, you're like, what are you doing here? It's like, oh, I don't know, I'm, I'm being preloaded. It's like, well, you're not even like in the viewport. You know, be like you should have no priority. So that's the kind of thinking that the browser is doing when they warn you that you're preloading assets that are not meant to show up on the viewport. So uh, preloading is a fantastic attribute. Use cautiously. Do not just liberally add preload to all the resources. Now let's talk about Q. Q stands for quick. Uh, spelled Q-U-I-C. Uh, again, uh, another sort of more modern uh, transport protocol, all right? Um, came around, I think, 2012 or so, right around with H2, HTTP2. Um, and again, meant to improve the connections, uh, meant to make it a lot faster to get the resources um, out to you. And uh, if you pop open your DevTools, you'll probably see forms of quick uh, being used. Uh, a lot of Google CDN assets are, are being delivered uh, using quick. Um, and in fact, uh, support is pretty good on that. I'm not sure on Safari, I have to double check, uh, but that's what that is, Q-U-I-C, if you ever see that. Now, um, R. R is going to be something for, I mean, a very 
classic fundamental in web performance. Um, R stands for requests. And the reason I mention a request is um, the adage goes as following. Um, the quickest request is the one that's never made. Right? So, you know, if you want a fast site, or at least the fastest sites tend to have low amount of requests. All right, because so don't forget, you have to go get the asset, bring it back, um, or request the asset and bring it back. There's nothing like not having to go, right? Um, it's like food, take out. Well, what if I just order it? <laughs> I don't need to leave my house. You know, so um, this is something I keep in mind all the time when I talk to folks. And if you ever look at a waterfall of a site and you see like, like I've seen sites with like 700 requests, which is incredible. But it just keeps your site from not loading completely. You know, it's like I'm on request 500. Let's keep going. And eventually you get to 700. You can drop that down to like a dozen, two dozen, whatever. You know, people sometimes will brag online. They're like, yo, I got a fast site. And I'm like, okay. And I pop open the hood. And I'm like, dude, you have like five requests. Of course you have a fast site. You know, if you didn't, that'd be a problem. So again, the request is, the best request is the one that's never made. Or like the fastest request is the one that's never made. So keep that in mind in your travels. Now, let's look at the letter S. Um, this is actually, uh, I'm going to talk about a particular metric. It's actually one of my favorite metrics. S stands for speed index. And what that is, it's an index that will indicate the visual completeness of a page. All right. So what ends up happening is that when you're uh, loading assets onto a screen, there are two things you want to think about. How many assets are showing up and how long they're taking. All right, so the greatest, uh, a good speed index is a screen, a viewport that fills up fairly quickly in very little time. All right, so let me give you a quick example. You could actually have two sites that load in like, I don't know, we'll say nine seconds. If one site at say one second had like, 80% of the view, viewport filled with content that you could read and potentially even interact with, and site B had like maybe 10% of their screen filled after like eight seconds, and then say the rest of the 90 shot up and uh, filled in in the last second, site A would have the best, the better speed index because they had more content in the screen that you could read in faster delays, all right? So that's the speed index. In fact, um, who's familiar with Lighthouse here? Lighthouse scores, you know? So if you ever look, again, if you pop up the hood and look at the uh, metrics that you're provided, uh, speed index will be one of the six metrics that they indicate. Um, so if you've never seen it, take a look. Uh, really cool metric, again, uh, at web page test, we actually have a graphic, a kind of a chart to show you what it looks like instead of just like the actual number. Um, and in this case, I think a good speed index is anything under like, I think, 3.8 seconds. Um, but yeah, it's one of my favorite um, uh, metrics. Now, let's talk about T. T is actually an interesting one. And again, old school, but still super duper important. Uh, T stands for TTFB, which is simply time to first byte. Uh, even though it's not listed, say, under the six metrics that you see when you do your Lighthouse score, or it's not mentioned so much as a Core Web Vital, it is vitally important to have a good um, time to first byte. What is a time to first byte? Well, it is the time at which the very first speckle of data is delivered from the server, right? Why is that important? Well, chances are, if that first speckle of data takes a while, 
your site's going to take a while to load. Okay, full disclosure, I'm a runner, and I'm kind of a track fan. Uh, and you know how the 1-200, they always talk about the start. You got to have a good start. Because um, if you have a bad start in that 100, there's a very good chance you're going to have a bad end. You're not going to be able to catch up to cats that are gone, and you're like, my start, my start, my start. That's why they talk about that a lot. TTFB is the exact same thing. If you have a long time to first bite, there's a good chance that things are just going to cascade, and it's like, no good. Um, some quick stats about that. You know, uh, on 4G, uh, the median um, TTFB uh, basically, uh, anything uh, 1.5 seconds or longer, there are 23% of sites that are like taking over an, a second and a half. And that's at 4G. At 3G, 72% are taking at least a second and a half or more. All right? So that gets back to a bunch of other things, you know, assets, whatever. But you want to make sure you have a good start in delivering some of the assets down the pipe. Unfortunately, a lot of times as well, this may be out of your hands. So um, I know I talked about this yesterday, when you run into things like shared hosting, all right? A lot of times they don't give you like the juice. You just put your site up and you're happy, cool, but bad time to first bites, which is why a lot of people are moving to CDNs content delivery networks that are like ready to just pump your, your content out there as quickly as possible and they have nodes all over the world. So Netlify, Vercel, all of them. So, and that's why they're all bragging about speed. Uh, let's talk about U. U stands for User Timing API. And again, this is an opportunity, uh, uh, again, an op another opportunity to do some measuring just at very specific points of your app, right? You're like, ah, oh, man, I don't know about this block and I feel like there might be a little bit of bottlenecking here. All right, you can actually indicate in your code what you want to measure and then it's gonna report it, all right? So that's the um, user timing API. V, V stands for, you know, we're at a conference right now, so I'm actually going to call out another conference that no longer is with us. V stands for Velocity. Velocity was a conference uh, that O'Reilly Media used to organize, and it was a performance conference entirely. Uh, I went once or twice? Twice. Once there, yes, three times. Anyways, um, a long time ago, a lot of the early performance engineers that I met and read about and I read their blog posts and all their writings, they would all go there. It used to happen four times a year. It was amazing. But um, luckily, with the wonders of the internet, a lot of that content uh, that's still relevant is out there online, so you can actually watch it. It's called the Velocity Conference. Super duper duper awesome. I used to watch the keynotes while I was at work and just getting inspired. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, so that's V. Uh, w, I mean, here comes the plug. Um, w stands for web page test. Uh, again, uh, I might as well go here. Uh, this is what we do. You know, we help people improve uh, site performance. We uh, surface a lot of the metrics uh, that you know about, others you may not know and you absolutely want to know, all right? Um, there's so much that uh, we cover. I could go through so much more, but uh, give it a shot, you know, uh, free sign up. You don't even have to sign up to use it uh, if you go to webpagetest.org. Uh, but if you do sign up, you get some additional features. Uh, there's a free sign up and there's actually a pro plan. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. And I had a workshop about it yesterday, so it's pretty cool. But you know what? W prime, there's always the second one. Um, w stands for waterfall. Uh, who pops into their dev tools from time to time? Don't be shy, if you don't do it, it's all good. But if you do, 
All right, so not too many of you. Uh, the waterfall is pretty much the truth. It will tell you exactly what's happening with your site, what assets are loading, when, in what order, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And in fact, I'll go as far as saying, if you can read a waterfall really well, that's really it. You know, you'll be able to diagnose issues on the spot. Um, so this is something I highly recommend um, if you're in Chrome. Any, you know, developer waterfall, I mean, any, any, develop, any browser dev tools, you can go in and look at the, uh, the waterfall. The waterfall that we have at the web page test is just phenomenal. Like data that you didn't think, you know, existed will surface it. Uh, but just generally, waterfall literacy, awesome. Um, as we close out, X. X simply stands for experience. I kind of cheated there, but user experience. Uh, everything that we do in web performance is really, it comes down to the user experience, right? We want to make sure it's as smooth as possible, that you know, there's no frustrations in a page load, um, this engineer at uh, Akamai has this website, I think uh, it's called the Frustration Index, you know, because people sometimes are like, yo, I'm not going to go to that site because I know it's slow. I go to some sites because I know they're quick because, you know, I have time to kill. I'm like, whatever, let me just look around. I know I'm not going to be like, okay, what's coming up here? Okay, let me just wait around. Because, um, again, the user experience is something that we pay some close attention to. Uh, and it comes in all forms. So that's X. Uh, y, uh, I'm going to go into the history books here. Y stands for Y slow. Uh, y slow was actually one of the uh, earliest uh, performance uh, tools out there. Um, I believe it came out of Yahoo, which is the whole Y slow thing. Uh, and I believe uh, Steve Souders and a new teammate of mine, Stoyan, uh, also worked on this uh, piece of engineering. Um, I think it's still out there. You might be able to use it. And lastly, uh, Zopfli. Zopfli is another uh, efficient compression library that's being used, but it's not one that's talked about a lot. Why? Because it's slow. Uh, and, you know, efficient as it is, speed is also very important in compression. Gzip, Broadly, they're quick, all right, the way they're set up. Uh, but, if you have to compress stuff on the fly and you're slow, you're not meant to be on the net, all right? Um, what's that quote by Colt McCandless? Um, oh, it's gonna come back to me. So, um, that's the last of uh, the uh, alphabet. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about, because again, I talk about the idea of really being in tune with uh, sort of like education, kind of like developer academia, um, which is why I run meetups. You know, I love to sort of get speakers to come and share some knowledge. Um, a web page test for those interested in web performance, um, we just released yesterday a free course. Um, and that's a course that was actually um, put out a few years ago, or not even, like maybe a year ago, by Scott Gell, um, a very respected uh, performance engineer. And he joined the team, in fact, a year ago, this week, and um, we acquired the course and we put it out there for free for the community. We just thought it was important to get the community sort of leveled up, uh, understanding the terms, uh, being able to sort of like get their start in performance. Because if you work in the front end, performance, you know, it's part of your, your, your uh, workflow now, like without a doubt. And, um, uh, it's out there right now. I don't know if you guys, if in case you want to uh, screenshot that, whatever, but if you uh, use your, uh, check this QR code, it'll take you to the page. Uh, and again, uh, free course. You could probably polish that off in a weekend easily and it'll give you access to um, some files, but certainly um, the, the kind of content that he talks about, you'll be able to research it as well and really expose you to this world of web performance that, again, is super duper crucial simply because the web is demanding it. And that's it. I want to thank you, everyone, uh, for sitting through that. 
you have any questions, I'm happy to take some now. Or you can tweet me. I'll, happy, I'll be happy to answer some uh, on Twitter as well. Uh, any questions at all? Going once, or you're going twice, you're very welcome. Merci, everyone, and have yourself a great rest of the day. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and that's that. All right. Okay, let's see where this... Oh, look at that, 1,300 likes. I'm rocking. Mm. <laughs> I don't know, something like that. I just want that. Oh, I have some stickers here if you want. Web page test stickers. I forgot. They're like, not the fancy, fancy ones, but whatever. <laughs> oh, you absolutely can. Take 10. <laughs> so there's like a shiny one, and then there's this one right here. So, yeah, you're super welcome. Whew. All right. Do, 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 do. Yes. Uh, I can go just on that, uh, that page and I will find it or I needed it. Uh, oh, no, you can find So if you go to, uh, let me see. I think we tweeted about it, but let me. Okay, so if you go to. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay, sure. Um, yeah, yeah, I got it. So if you scan that, it'll take you right to the page. The page looks like this, um, and you know the URL is a little long. Um, so I'll show it to you. Hold up, because I think it's a subdomain. But let me double check. Um, um, come on now. Give me a second. I'm gonna have to use it here. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Ah, oh, there it goes. So if you go to, um, oh, sorry, I thought it was here. So if you go to webpagetest.org, uh, learn slash lightning fast web performance. Um, I'm trying to think here. Would you, if uh, I'm going to see if it, because I think we left it on the webpagetest.org, I mean our Twitter account for a uh, web page test. Uh, if it's not, I'm gonna pin it to our profile. Yeah, so if you go to webpagetest.org also, so are you on Twitter? Oh, that's why. Yeah, 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 for sure. Are you on LinkedIn? Are you on LinkedIn? Um, if you, I, I, we, we have it pinned on LinkedIn as well, but like definitely right here. So if you go to webpages or learn slash learn slash lightning fast web performance or Google that, that'll come up for sure. And do I need to find on LinkedIn you or this company? Uh, you can find that company. So if you go to web page test, uh, or you can find me too, but if you go to web page test, uh, you'll find it. And I think we, 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 mess, we put that out yesterday. Um, but yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's a brand new course. It's super free, and uh, and yeah, like you could easily finish it in a weekend. And the, and the, the tools for for uh, um, testing uh, that the performance, I have to buy. It no, 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 totally not. It's so open. no, it's totally yeah, it's totally. So if you, it is actually open source. Uh, we have like a premium feature for like particular features, but if you, so if you go webpagetest.org. This, you find it, and I'll show you right now. So um, I'm going to take this. I'm going to show you a different page. Uh, so I have it open on a different page here, but it'll be easier. So if I go here, and I don't know, let's go to ESPN.com, right? So I would do that. And then um, I would just, so there's like a pull down menu, but you just want to do like a basic site performance and you just start the test. Ooh, uh, yeah. Okay. Oops, what the hell is going on? Uh, are we having back end issues? Let's see. Two, nine neurons left. Uh, okay, so now it's actually starting. So basically, what's happening? Uh, oh, I'm at the front of the queue, at the front of the queue, okay. So there's probably like one person in front of me because uh, I'm on a free account here just to show. But what will happen is that it'll start this test 
And once the test is finished, uh, I could probably show you a finished test, which I will. Um, yeah, I'm going to do that right now. So after the test starts and it's finished, oh, hold on. Du -du 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 -du. It's going to look like, yeah, what's going on here? Come on. All right, let me drag this. It's going to look like this. So here I was looking at the Apple website with the, I had a workshop yesterday and I was looking at the Apple website. So it'll look like this and it'll say web performance test results, performance summary, yada, yada, yada. And then you start to have these metrics, right? And uh, so I talked about the LCP. This is one of the metrics. Um, I talked about that first byte. So we call it first byte, but it's time to first byte as well. That's one of the metrics. So this is something we consider this a little slow. Um, we have things like this um, uh, film strip, we call it, where you can see like what was going on. So I clicked on that one frame and I could see exactly how the content was being loaded. So we saw a nav bar come up, then we saw some text come up, and then we saw the image come up, right? So there's a lot of information that you can sort of process and, you know, your teams could say, okay, well, you know, we need to make sure that maybe the images come up a little faster. So you go into the code and make some, some adjustments. Like something like this, the images, I would give it like that preload fetch priority so that I tell the browser, say, hey, put that on the page faster. This is the, uh, the waterfall I was telling you about. So... That's apple.com, right? So the fact that this is long to me is concerning, right? So that's why I was saying that TTFB, time to first byte, is super important because here that took a while, which then pushed the entire timeline back. And that's the HTML being parsed, parsed, and then you have all these assets being loaded. And here also there was another challenge which is why that got pushed even further out. And then there are the things like, you know, this is a big image that's being loaded. And the fact that I can see a lot of dark, pa dark patches means that there's a lot of data coming down. That image took three and a half seconds to load. And that image is also a PNG, which is an old format. So all that just feeds all this information to you to let you know, like, hey, there's some changes that you can make here so that this fight is this this um this uh site loads a little faster you know so uh, what was the you said it was a new image format for a and avif okay so i'll show you what avif is um let me see actually let's open up a new page so i just want to google more about it yeah yeah for sure so um okay. avif all right um so basically long story short it's a brand new image format and did you, did you email at all? No. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, so it's a brand new image format. And what happens, again, it's the idea that uh, images needed updating uh, because they came about in a time where the internet was not really around or important. Uh, but we found in the last, like, say, decade that, you know, with the kind of traffic that's being uh, put out, that's going out on the internet, uh, the kind of content that people are consuming, um, the ability to have smaller assets is something we always keep in mind, right? So it's, I don't know, imagine parking, right? Uh, if we fill the parking lot with big SUVs, they're still parked, but you're like, man, we need more room. But if you fill the parking lot with smaller cars, you can get more cars into that parking lot. That's what we're trying to do with images. Uh, if images keep go coming in big, they take up a lot of data, and we can get that same image with less data. All right. And th when you compare this uh, this format, it is uh, more like uh, JPEG or PNG. It's, so or? it's much smaller than both, right? So that's why it's important. So it's um, like a good compression or and. Absolutely. So you can get the same image with much smaller sizing because the compression is much better. It's more modern. Because again, don't forget that the JPEG has been around 30 years. So the compression that it's using 
worked, but we can now get something smaller with better compression. And that's what's happening with AVIF and a couple of the formats out there, you know. Um, that's the nature of the internet, really, because the internet does not happen without compression. Like, if there was no compression on the internet, it'd be a very bad scene, which is why I talked about Bratly. Bratly is important. Gzip is important. Um, there are only a few assets on the internet that are not um, uh, compressed, uh, say, at the browser level. But if they can get compressed before they get to the browser, like I said, uh, you know, through uh, being a smaller format like AVIF or there's another one called WebP, uh, these are things that we're absolutely looking for and pushing towards every time. So there's a lot of research happening.